welcome back to HTC Math Tutoring with Nathan and today we're going to go over the pigeonhole principle which is a new um, syllabus point in the extension one math syllabus this year. Um, I hope you enjoyed the thumbnail and understood it without um, the title context or you can go back and check it out now. So without further ado let's go straight into it. So what's the pigeonhole principle? Well imagine we have, let's just keep it simple, that's shocking. These are four pigeonholes. And now let's assume these, these blobs are my pigeons. So the pigeonhole principle states that there is at least one pigeonhole with two pigeons. So I'm gonna call this, I'm just gonna go up to pigeonhole principle. So there's at least one pigeonhole, so I'm just to abbreviate that just to save me some time, and pigeonhole with two pigeons. How we come to that is, well, we do the pigeons divided by the pigeonholes, which is five divided by four, which gives us one with remainder one. So that shows us that if we were to fit at least one pigeon in each pigeonhole and there's a remainder one which means one hole has to have two so I'll state it again we put one in each pigeonhole and we still have one pigeon left which means it can go in any one of these we can just put it here so then there's at least one pigeonhole with two realistically you could put all five in one hole but the, the whole idea is um, to spread out thinly like that's the statement that there's two pigeons in at least one pigeonhole and that's um and we're going to do a few examples now to illustrate how we use this proof so in context it's the same this principle sounds straightforward but applying it to real life problems is a lot more complicated so i've got um two quick problems one simple and one more complicated so let's do this here so when a die is rolled 13 times with and standard die with numbers one to six, explain why one of the numbers must turn up three times. So straight away, seeing how this is related to pigeonhole principle isn't straight obvious. So what you wanna do is state what the pigeons are and what the pigeon holes are. If you actually state that, it's gonna help you a lot, then you can actually go back and use the above diagram. So here, the pigeons is the 13 rolls, right? And the pigeon holes are the one to six, right? The numbers that can be shown. So, that's, so essentially what we've got here is we've got six numbers and 13 pigeons because Right, so six pigeon holes, 13 pigeons, because what we're doing is we're rolling the die six, um, 13 times. So if we do what we said, we do the pigeons divided by the pigeon holes, we get two remainder one. So by pigeon hole principle, one pigeon hole has at least three pigeons. And the thing about here, three pigeons in one pigeonhole means exactly this. One number will turn up three times because remember, this pigeonhole means, is a number, represents one. And we're just showing here, if there's three pigeons in this one, that means three rolls will have a one. So we're gonna say therefore, one number will turn up three times. And that's our conclusion. So you see that the key is, you can even draw this diagram just to illustrate yourself. Let's just say we do this case here, two, 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 two. That's the this case we're spreading it thin, okay? So you can see here, drawing a diagram will actually help. Well, this looks fun. This one looks like it's checking that one out. But you can see just by setting out what are your pigeons, what are your pigeonholes? Now I'm just gonna put it to here, diagram can help. Okay, so that's a relatively straightforward application of the pigeonhole principle. So let's look at a more difficult one. 
If you have any questions, just make sure to comment below. Okay, so the next one. Showing any set of 14 different positive odd numbers, all less than 52, there is a pair whose sum is 52. So there are 26 odd numbers less than 52, right? You got one, three, five, dot, 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 51. So by symmetry, if you've got 52 numbers, half of them have to be odd. So that's 26. Just make that look better. Now, how many pairs will add to 52, we're gonna think here? Because right, that's what we're thinking. We want them to add the sum to be 52, so let's think, well, one and 51. And then that means if we put it in here, three and 49, so you can see by symmetry, it's the first and last, second and second last, and so on. So that means half of them, so then 13 pairs will add to 52. If you want here, 1, 51, 3, 49, and etc. All the way to the middle, 25 and 27. So now let's see how does this relate to the pigeonhole principle. Well, here's the thing. By working this out here, look at this 13 pairs. 14 different positive odd numbers and we need to show there is a pair whose sum is 52. So if you think about this, well, what's my pigeon, what are my pigeonholes? So my pigeons are the 14, that looks like an A, odd numbers. And the pigeonhole is the 13 pairs that add to 52. So if you think about this, pigeonhole principle, if we do 14 divided by 13, so remember pigeons divided by pigeonhole, we get one remainder one. So therefore by pigeonhole principle, one pigeonhole has at least two, at least two pigeons. Okay, so this, don't worry about this here. So how does that mean there's a pair whose sum is 52. Well, think of it like this. Let's draw the diagram to illustrate. So these are our 13 pigeonholes and there are two in this one pigeonhole. So what that means is there is so the pigeonholes are the pairs that add to 52. And we've just, by picking 40 numbers, we've picked, we've ensured that two of those odd numbers will be at least in that one pigeonhole. I.e., we're gonna have one of those pairs that adds to 52. All right, so think of it like this. We've got one here, three, and so on. We've got 25. So we've assured that there's going to be at least, let's say 51 was in the group. We're going to show that 51 is at least in that one. That's just one example. There's 13 different cases, or 13 different pairings. But that's all the pigeonhole principle is saying, is that there's going to be at least one pigeonhole with that pairing that adds 52. So we can say, therefore, there is one pair that adds to 52. Yeah, and um, that's it. That summarizes the pigeonhole principle. So I think if you can do, understand how to do an, an example like this difficult, this one's a much more difficult example, you will be pretty set with pigeonhole principle. I recommend it, making sure that you can at least do the first type. That's the most basic type. You should Most people should be all able to do that. The advanced one is a bit more difficult. And there are even harder ones, like that would be extremely hard. This is still difficult and there's even harder ones, but if you can do this level, you'll go on well. So again, um, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to smash that like button and comment below. Also comment any other HSC topics you want me to cover. And don't forget to subscribe and share with your friends um, if you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.